a fighter, the mental side is just as important as the physical side. If you feel mentally weak, if you feel mentally like incorrect, if you feel mentally uh, like flustered, you don't perform as well. And even if everything's on point physically, if you're not mentally there, you won't perform. How important is the mental aspect for a professional athlete? Well, if you ask me, it will be very important. What is the demands that are placed upon them? So, for example, if you're a combat sport, then it's about the ability to understand your opponent, their strengths and also their weaknesses. And having worked with a few MMA fighters, professional fighters, I got to understand that they study their opponents really well and understanding where their strengths and their weaknesses are. And obviously, they need to match up to some of those strengths and weaknesses. Particularly, they need to make sure that they focus on the opponent's weaknesses because that's probably something they can handle without you know, uh, getting too much into trouble, if you know what I mean. For sure, for sure. There's a lot of like techniques that you can do. Uh, if you're if you're off mentally, there's always like exercise, mental exercise that you can do. Uh, there's a lot of good sports psychology books that you can read. Um, Ten minute toughness is one of them. Um, you know, there, there's there's a few out there that are really good. When we look at globally uh, international athletes, Olympic athletes, world champion level athletes, they mostly work with a sports psychologist. So it is not uncommon uh, because at the end of the day, there's just so much um, they can do as an individual. But when they reach out to specialists who specialize in these areas, that's where they can leverage all our expertise and be able to strengthen their mental game. Just getting ready, make sure everything's on point. I make sure my breathing is right. I'm not, you know, I'm not too excited. You don't want to be too excited or too mellow. You want to be right in that correct mental space where you can perform to the best of your ability. And for me, uh, when I walk down, I just think about the technical aspect of, of the fight, a uh, technical aspect of where my hand should be, where my feet should be. So we use this scenario or this general planning strategy called the what if exercise. So the what if exercise is simple by identifying what if your opponent does this, or what if your competitor athlete does this, what is your response and how would you deal with it? And if that plan doesn't work, what is plan B or plan C? So that athletes are always prepared, they do not get caught off guard, and they are able to stay calm and composed and you know have that faith in themselves because they train themselves to be able to deal with those situations. I try not to uh, put too much weight on the win or the loss. I try to put more weight on, you know, getting better. Uh, if when I lose, I just work on, uh, you know, just on, on the on, on getting better in my technique and just being a better athlete. One of the things that we know for for athletes in sport is that failure and disappointment is part of the deal. And so, if you think about it become an elite athlete, you would be in a way comfortable even or getting used to dealing with disappointments and even failure. And failure for us of course is to lose a match or competition. So that's part of the deal. And to be able to reach the higher level, they need to be able to handle that. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Ang Lan Sun. Please check out and follow Medical Channel Asia. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for your regular dose of Asian health information.